a man burden himself with a wife when he can buy such a woman, huh? Efren, Efren, you're a terrible man. <laughs> but you better not be forgetting. She's a servant, not a slave. Oh, now, I defy you to tell the difference once good money has been paid. She's young, you say? Young, oh, yes, yes. And full of womanly virtues, huh? <laughs> How tall? What oh, colors in hell? Oh, in good time. You'll see her, you'll see her. But she's a prize, I'm telling you that, yes. <laughs> She's the kind of a woman that a man dreams of when he's out there alone. Hey, hey, you! He stood just four Stop feet that high. Stop that And ere a man said boo to him, he'd quiver and he'd cry. But once he tipped the tank, it was a sight to see. I'll swear he whipped a fella three times the size of me. So I'll lift I the tankard high before the racket. I lift the tankard. Why? Because they don't like the sound of your voice, that's why. That's a reason. Ah, lift the tankard high, my boy, lift the tankard high. Don't you worry about... Didn't much like the sound of that, neither. Josh, don't fight him. <laughs> You don't stand a chance. I've seen him kill six men in brawls like this. I ain't gonna be the seventh. Don't be a fool. Just stand back. Here, hold my money, Ben. Hey, 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 by authority of the Crown, this auction is about to commence. Hey, well, now, that's hey, too bad. We're gonna have to settle this later. After I tend to some important business. All right, give me back my 50 pounds. And you, don't go away, Sonny, will you, huh? I ain't going anywhere. You can thank your own luck you didn't have to finish that fight. You can take my advice and get out here just as far as you can go. Yeah, that's something I'm gonna have to think about. Now you don't need my words to tell you what a buy she is. She's strong, she's educated, and she's pretty. You'll need a fat purse to get her reference. Well, I have it, I have it. And besides all this, she's indentured for a term of five years, two months, and 15 days. The bidding will start at 25 pounds. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Thirty. Thirty pounds. I have thirty pounds. Who'll say thirty-one? Thirty-one. Thirty-two. Thirty-two pounds. Who'll say thirty-three pounds? Thirty-three. Thirty-four. Thirty-five. 
40 pounds. Forty pounds. Who'll say forty-one? All right, then. Forty pounds once. Forty pounds twice. Forty pounds and one pence. Forty-one pounds. I'm bid forty-one pounds. Who'll say forty-two? Then forty-one once. Forty-one twice. Forty-one pounds and one pence. Forty-two pounds and one pence. Forty-five pounds and one pence. Josh, are you out of your mind? He challenged me to a fight, didn't he? I figure this will hurt him a mite more than what he's used to. Forty-five and one pence, forty-five and one pence, he'll say forty-six. Forty-six pounds and one pence. Josh! Look, you heard him say he had 50 pounds, didn't you? I'll stop whenever a bit of that's gone. 46 and one pence, 46 and one pence, who'll say 47? Josh, you're gonna end up dead or have a servant girl, or both if that's possible. 47 pounds and one pence. 49 pounds! <laughs> Forty-nine pounds and two pence. I have no more money. I kill him, I tell you. I tear his jet. Let me out. Let me out. I kill him. Wait, he said he had. He said he had fifty pounds. He said he had fifty pounds. Best year I ever had, too. I was going to relax, enjoy myself, maybe buy a piece of land. Now it's gone. But you did it to save me. Does that mean anything? I did it for a stupid joke and to teach some fellow a lesson. I didn't even look around and see what I was bidding on until it's too late. Now, thanks to you, I got a trap all winter, even after the cold sets in. You see these? That's all I got left in the world. Here, you might as well have them, too. Now, go on, get. You're free. I'm sorry for all the trouble I caused you. I really am. Oh, it wasn't your fault. Besides, you got your freedom. I guess that's worth something. My freedom? I just turned you loose, didn't I? Yes, but I, I don't want it. You don't? No. I, I don't have any money. No place to go. Well, you don't expect to stay with me for the next five years. Yes, I do. <laughs> Tarnation, what kind of a fool do you think people think I am? Trapping in the wilderness with a servant girl lollygagging along with me. I won't be any trouble. I'll, I'll even learn how to trap. Mm. I can cook and I can sew. I'll, I'll keep your things neat. I don't want my things neat. You wouldn't sell me, would you? Of course I would if I could find a buyer. Oh, please don't. Please don't. I don't care what your reasons were for buying me. But that man that you saved me from back there, the way he looked at me made me want to die. People are like that all over, but you're different. I could see that. You're kind and you're strong. Oh, don't you see? I don't want to leave you. Now, there's going to be a way out of this. One way or the other, there's going to be a way out of this.
did you find me? Right behind you all the way. You was, huh? I didn't think you'd leave me like that. What did you expect me to do? This is the way I live, the biggest part of the year. Now, it ought to be plain that I got no use for a servant girl. But you have me, whether you have any use for me or not. And you're going to follow me all the way to Boonesboro? Yes. You got your mind all made up to that? Well, there, there could be some other reasons I might mention. But one thing's very plain. I'm your servant, and it is my duty to follow you wherever you go. Let's have a look at it. Oh, just a scrape. It's not going to hold me back. Here, here, you do it. There. I'm all ready. Ready for what? To go on. Well, maybe you're ready, but I'm played out. You are? <laughs> Gal, you are something different. I am? Well, I, I, I said you was, didn't I? Now, get a fire started by the time I get back. Where are you going? I'm going to go get some more water. You're not going to leave me again, are you? If I was going to leave you, I wouldn't leave all that. I'd just get busy. I mean, I could, I, I could have taken, I could have taken care of him. It, it's just, we better tie him up. Uh, uh, we'll, he'll get loose in, in a little bit, but uh, we'll be gone by then. That's not the life for me. That ain't the life for me. I go where I want to, do what I will. Now that's the life for me. I once knew a fella, slaved all his life 
had twelve hungry young'uns and a nagging old wife. His brow was all furred, his back was all bent. Before he was forty, his life was all spent. And that ain't the life for me. No, that's not the life for me. I'll go where I want to do what I will. That's the life for me. Yeah, I'll go where I want to do what I will. That's the life for me. Something smells awful good. Mm-hmm. Fried rabbit. Rabbit? Mm -hmm. I don't remember shooting no rabbit. It didn't. Well, don't tell me it just walked into camp and give itself up. No. I set a snare for it. Then I was going to teach you how to trap. I learned things real fast. I don't say you do. I don't even remember having started to teach you. Your supper's ready. Ain't you gonna eat? It's not proper. What ain't proper? For a servant to eat with the master. That's downright ridiculous. That's what my first master taught me. Well, I ain't your first master. And I don't hold with things like that. As a matter of fact, I ain't your second master either. I belong to you. Would you stop saying that? You're an unfortunate accident. Now go on and eat. Yes, master. And stop looking at me like that. You could ruin a man's appetite. How was I looking at you? Well, kind of. How do I know how you're looking at me? Go on, eat. Yes, Master. My name's Josh. Yes, Josh. Josh Clements. Yes, Josh Clements. Well, it is good. I'm glad you like it. If the fellow wasn't careful, he could kind of get to like it. Go on, eat. We got to get out of here early in the morning. Afternoon. How do you do? We're heading north, but got some fixing to do on the wagon. Figured we'd stay over a day or two. Well, over there by the blacksmith shop would be a handy place. Put you close to the well. Much obliged to you. Ooh. You're welcome. Hello, Josh. Josh? Simon? How's everything, Josh? Oh, it's fine. Come on, boy. We got work to do. Hello, Josh. <clears throat> Since then. Uh, coming in? I'm kind of surprised to see you here, Josh. Is that so? Mm-hmm. Why is that? Well, I thought you saw through for the season. Well, I guess I ain't. Yeah. Dan around? Over at the cabin. Figured I'm talking to him a bit later. Yeah, well, uh, he's over there. Anything I can do for you? Yeah, well, I'm good. <laughs> you got any rooms? Just one. Just one? Just one. I'll, I'll take it. The second one on the left there, and the door's open. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't know he got married, Josh. Ain't married. This is my servant girl. <laughs> I've gone and ruined everything for you, haven't I? Not yet, you ain't. That's why I'm gonna go see Daniel. He don't know what to do. Yes, sir, Josh, I'd say you have a little problem. Well, I don't see nothing so funny about it. <laughs> I can't help but see the humor. I, I don't see why that girl has to wait outside. Because I don't want to hear him mooning and gawking over every word I say, that's why. Well, I think it's impolite. Well, it may be unpolite, but I got a few things to talk over with you, and I want to do it in private. Well, what do you expect us to say? Well, you must have some ideas. Can't say that I do. Hello? Hello? What are you doing? Waiting. My name's Israel. Mine's Sarah. You like raccoons? Never thought too much about them. They're fun. Pa, look what I found. Well, that's a fine looking raccoon, son. Josh! Oh, wait. Do you want to hold him? A little later, maybe. What kind of girl is Sarah? I don't follow you. Well, I know she's young and pretty, but. What's she like? Oh, well, she's kind of smart and hardworking and nice enough in many ways, I suppose. She likes raccoons, too. She does. Uh, Israel, we're trying to have a grown up talk in here. You suppose you could go outside until we're finished? Suppose so. Pa, isn't Sarah grown up? Yes, son, she sure is. Then why does she have to wait outdoors? Israel, do what your father says. Yes, ma'am. Bye. Bye. Josh, I guess what I'm trying to say is, how do you feel about Sarah? I don't feel no way about her. It's the way she feels about me is the problem. Well, how do you mean? How do I mean? She is out of her head in love with me is how I mean. you never seen nothing like it. She wasn't so stuck on me. I guess I could sneak off someplace and leave her, but her feeling the way she does, I, I just couldn't do that to anybody. Well, that's why you haven't tried to sell her. Oh, all I got to do is mention that, and she goes all to pieces. Oh, uh, well, then you do feel something for her. Well, in a way, maybe I do. I, nothing meaningful. I, I just don't want nothing bad to happen to her, that's all. Are you sure that's all? What in tarnation are you trying to say, Becky? All right. All right. Ever since you arrived with that girl, Boonesboro's been humming with gossip. Mm-hmm. Bunch of busy bodies. Well, now, that's not exactly true, Josh. Uh, there are other people concerned about sir. No? Boonesboro's a small place, but we have certain customs, and we have certain moral ideas. They saying I ain't moral? Oh, of course not. But you've got to look at it from their point of view. A young girl, unchaperoned, living with a single man. Well, I just don't think it's going to be tolerated for very long. All right. What am I going to do? Well, that's the reason I want to know how you felt about Sarah. Seems to me that you have two choices open to you. Sell her or marry her. Marry her? Well, it's only my opinion. Well, I ain't marrying nobody. You hear? Nobody. Well, then, Josh, it seems to me like you better find yourself a buyer real quick. Now, I'm offering this here servant girl, Sarah Wadsworth, to the highest bidder. I brought her here to Boonesboro because you folks are given to be a bit kinder than most. And so she could find a good home to work out her indebtedness for the next five years. Now, you, you don't need to take my word for what a good buy she is. Because you can see she's strong and educated and pretty. 
Oh, that poor girl. I never thought he'd do a thing like this. Doesn't Josh like her? Of course he does. Now, if you used to know what I paid for and what I'm willing to sell her for, then you'd know that the only thing that I'm interested in is finding Sarah a good home. So we're going to start the bidding off at one pound. Sure don't seem like much. Well, if I had it, I'd sure pay it. One pound. Do I hear one pound? Don't nobody want her? Come on, boy. Best not get involved. But, Grandpa, I'm... Come on. Well, don't tell me you think a pound's too high. But who's the first bidder? Simon. Simon, how about you? Not interested. Well, but think what a help it'd be to your wife. No more slaving from dawn till dark. Matthew. Your wife wouldn't have to do any more scrubbing or cleaning or taking care of the young uns? That's exactly what I want my wife to be doing. And if we don't keep them busy, there'll be no rest for us at all. But, 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 but I'm practically giving her away. These are her papers I paid near on to 50 pounds for. And I'm just asking one. Can't you understand we don't want no servant girl? Cincinnati, what about you? Now, now you ain't got their reasons. You got a place of business. Now, now, wouldn't it be kind of nice to have a servant girl around to keep things tidied up and nice and, and for practically nothing, too? Are you going to tell me that don't appeal to you? No, I ain't. Well, then. Uh, but I ain't buying her, neither. Why? Because I don't enjoy breaking young girls' hearts, that's why. Any fool can see she worships you. And I expect if you're honest with yourself, you might feel a little bit that way about her yourself. I don't. And why is everybody so all-fired anxious to tell me how I feel? Because it's writ all over your face. That's why. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you. I'm, I'm going to let you start to bid. Do I hear a bid? I just don't understand it. Well, I suppose if you took her back to Salem to auction, that other fella would get her. Him or somebody like him, and I couldn't let that happen. You know, Josh, I think you care a lot more about Sarah than you were admitting. So everybody keeps telling me. Sarah? Sarah, dear. You can stay with us until the wedding. The wedding? Sarah, you're not going out. I, I was only going for a little stroll. Well, that's not the safest thing for a woman to do alone. We're pretty much in the middle of the wilderness here. I know. I, I wasn't going to go very far, only to... <laughs> to where Josh is. <laughs> yeah. I miss not being near him. I know his friends are giving him a party, so I won't disturb him. Well, that's all right. Josh is a mighty lucky man. But be careful. I will. <laughs> Here's to you, Josh. It's a lonely world you're leaving, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> and a noisy one you're going to. Yeah! What are you saying? Why, why she's a fine, quiet girl, right, Daniel? Seems huh? to be. Oh, yeah. They're all quiet before the wedding. Right! <laughs> you all right, boy? I'm just thinking, Grandpa. We're going to be needing some more water. I'll get it in a minute. There you are, Josh. Oh, you don't expect me to sing. Oh, come on, Josh. Oh, sing? Oh, What's a celebration without a song, huh? Yeah, right. 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 Well, if you don't mind, I am just not in the mood. Oh, 
Oh, come on. Uh, Josh Mann is in some kind of mood from the minute he's born. Now, you just find a song that fits yours. Man was born to be free as the wind With the mountains and rivers And trees as his friend To follow a path Just to see where it ends A man ain't a man Lest he's free A man like the wind Don't tarry for long He's gone in a moment Like the words of a song Love's meant for some men But love's not for me I'm a taster of honey, not a keeper of bees. An animal caged is a sad thing to see, for God in his wisdom created him free. And the arms of a woman will never hold me. Cause a man ain't a man Lest he's free Yes, a man was born To be free as the wind With the mountains and rivers And trees as his friend An animal caged Is a sad thing to see for God in his wisdom created him free. Evening. Good evening. I, uh, and just get some water. Oh. A woman will never hold me. Because a man ain't a man, lest he's free. Yes, man was born to be free as the wind With the mountains and rivers And trees as his friend To follow a path Just to see where it ends Cause a man ain't a man Lest he's free It's all right. That's nice. That's nice. All right. If you don't mind, I think I'll get some air. Well, I think I'll have another drink. Oh, yeah, I'll have one myself. <laughs> You following me again? I was just out for an evening stroll. And you, uh, just happened to walk here. I'm sorry. Come on, I'll walk you to the cabin.
my old friend from Salem. Hey, lock him up in his storeroom. Come on, fellas. Bars. Bars. Are you hurt, boy? Well, I'm all right, Grandpa. Are you all right, man? Yes, I'm fine. Thank you. That better? Yeah, it'd be a whole lot better when you get that full. Where's Sarah? Outside, tending that young feller. You want to see if she gets home all right? Mm-hmm. All right. Line them up in front of me, Cincinnati, and keep them coming. I got a whole lot to think through. Yeah, I guess, uh, I guess a little. You know, it's strange, you and your grandpa leaving tomorrow. I'll probably never see you again. Yeah, it's strange, all right. You getting married and all that. Yeah. Is he a nice fellow? Oh, yes. Yeah, well, of course he is now. A girl like you wouldn't choose a man who wasn't. <laughs> no. Anyways, I sure do want to wish you all the best. Thank you. How's Josh? Oh, he'll be all right. It's a fine thing you did. Well, I guess I wasn't really very much help. Well, I'm not sure I would agree with you on that, but we all appreciate it. Sir, if you're ready, I'll walk you back. Yes, I am. Uh, thank you, and goodbye. Well, nice meeting you, man. Sarah. Sarah. My name's Bart, Bart Cooley. Pleasure to know you, Mr. Boone. Same here. Oh, your coat's torn. Oh, well, now that's nothing. I'll mend it for you. Oh, well, no, don't go to any trouble because of me. I can fix it myself. No, no, really, I'd like to. Besides, I'd like to thank you somehow more than just saying it. It's little enough after what you've done. Well, now, if you really want to... Uh, I would. I'd not be much obliged. Uh, if you could stop by in the morning, I'll have it ready for you. All right, I'll do that. Good. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night, Bart. I'm Mr. Boone. in a tree. I don't know. It's just where I was when I woke up. Well, I'll get you something. You know, in a way, I resent that guy interfering the way he did last night and helping Sarah out and all. Why? Because if it hadn't been for him, my problems with that girl would be over. She just wouldn't be here no more. Josh Clemens. Soft, Becky. Soft. Here, drink this. Drink her all down. One big gulp. Home remedy. <laughs> What's it made out of? Snake venom? I know it tastes awful, but a spoonful will cure a sick stomach. A spoonful? Well, you gave me a whole... Well, don't that beat all. Worked, didn't it? I do believe it is. Ain't that amazing? Thank you very much, Dan. Well, you're welcome. Where's Sarah? Outside. You probably walked right past it. So she is. You know, I guess I could do a whole lot worse. Either she's trailing me around like a puppy dog or sitting out there dreaming about me. 
Why don't you go out and say hello? She's probably worried about you. Josh? Sarah? Uh, how, how are you feeling? Oh, fine. Morning. Morning, Bart. Josh? Hello, Sarah. Morning. Hey, I don't know if I thanked you proper for last night, but I sure do this morning. I know. I'm, I'm the one that's grateful. If you hadn't uh, taken care of that fellow, I'd like to get killed. Well, I still thank you. It's all right. Glad to do it. How's the head? Well, I think it'll heal. Uh, your coat's fixed. Hey, now, look at that. You can hardly tell it was ripped. Thank you. You're telling you two are getting married. So everybody keeps telling me. Well, I sh sure do wish you the best. Thanks. Uh, when are you and your grandpa leaving? Oh, well, fact is, he's probably back there waiting on me right now. I guess I better get back. Guess so. Well, sure nice meeting you folks. Long, Bart. Mr. Boone. Bye, Bart. Bye, Josh. Bye, Sarah. Goodbye. He's a nervous sort of fella, ain't he? Well, I'm gonna go chop some wood. Uh, Dan, uh, Sarah, why don't you see if you can help Becky? Daniel, I gotta have a few words with you. For a fellow that's so anxious to talk, you're sure not doing much. Yeah, I guess not. Of course, that's all right with me. Daniel, I've always been a man of my word. Yes, you have. And I aim to stay like that. Now, I give my word to Sarah that I'd marry her, and I will. But now there's a voice down inside of me keeps yelling and hollering against it and saying it's wrong. You know me. I'm a man of the free outdoors. Always was, always want to be. And a wife to me, it just don't seem natural. Daniel, can you think of any way out of this thing? Josh, I've noticed that certain women sometimes come to respect a man almost as much as they love him. And women are kind of funny. Sometimes they'll give up the most important thing in the world to them, if it's right for the man. Now, Sarah strikes me as that kind. So maybe if you went to her and talked to her, told her how you feel, well, you never know. Maybe she'll come up with the answers you're looking for. Daniel, you don't know her. I just wind up breaking her heart all over again. Maybe. Maybe not. Here, this ought to do. Uh, Sit down. I still don't understand why we have to come so far just to talk. Well, it's because if you start crying and carrying on, I figure I ought to be the only one to hear it. Sarah, this is going to be hard for me to say, and it's going to be hard for you to hear. But sometimes a woman can respect a man just as much as she loves him, and she, she might be willing to give up the thing that she wants the most. Josh, what are you trying to say? Sarah, I said I'd marry you, and I will if that's the way you got to have it, but that ain't the way I want it. It's not what I want either. If you can give me one good reason how you could stand to spend... Josh, did you hear what I just said? What? I don't want to get married to you either. You don't? No. Why? Just because. You, 
You mean you just stop loving a man just like that any time you're a mind to? I... I never knew what love was. The strongest I ever felt about a man was the way I felt about you. But that wasn't love. Boy, you beat all. Now, I don't understand what you're getting so angry about. You don't? No. I mean, after all, if I don't love you and I don't want to get married to you, well, isn't that what you've wanted all along? Well, yeah, but a man don't like to have his pride stomped all over. Oh, I'm sorry. You're sorry. Well, we're right back where we started. I can't sell you, and I can't turn you loose. Well, uh, that, that might not be so true anymore. What do you mean? Um, Bart and his grandpappy are going north. And I thought, well, maybe that they might be willing to... Uh-huh. Bart, I knew he'd been acting awful nervous. Uh, be mighty proud to help the young lady out, but we don't have no money. I kind of figured that. That's why I brought Dan and Becky along as witnesses. I guess you wouldn't mind having Sarah along on the trip, would you, Bart? Well, now, Josh, you know I wouldn't. How much you figure she's worth? Well, I don't... Know what I paid for her? Near 50 pounds. Huh? If you had 50 pounds, do you think she'd be worth it? Well, now, sure I would, but I don't have You're any... a pretty fair shot with a rifle. Come here. You see that limb sticking out on the tree, the one that's kind of squiggly and bent? If we was to keep shooting at it, would you bet 50 pounds which one of us could hit it first? Of course, now, I ain't got no money. So, if I was to lose, I'd have to turn over to you the only thing that I got that's worth 50 pounds, which happens to be Sarah. I'll shoot first. Well, now, Josh, wait a minute. I mean, uh, what happens if I lose? Somehow, I just don't think that's going to happen. Josh, you know, the way you shoot, I hope you don't run into any Indians. <laughs> <laughs> so long. Bye. Hi. Josh, I got to hand it to you. You did a fine job solving that problem. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. I hope my next problem will be easier. I got to spend a couple of months trapping just to make up for what I lost. It'll be lonely around here without you. I thank you, Becky. Not half as lonely as word I'm gonna be. Well, you forget. You're used to it. I guess so. Josh, I wonder, could I ask you something? Becky. Do you have any regrets about giving up Sarah? <laughs> Becky, I don't exactly know. There's some things in life I reckon a man ought to be pushed into. For his own good, you might say. But I don't think Mary and Sarah was one of them. Still, mm. for she pretty. Of course, now, wasn't nothing I decided. I mean, if she didn't want to go on to the wedding, fine. You know what? I guess I ought to be thankful for the fickleness of women. Not all women, Becky. Just certain ones. You take care of her. Because she's reliable. I'll do that. Oh, it's a single life for me, and happy I will be. Now I may have to trap for six more months, but single I will be. Yes, a single man I'll be, happy and I'm free. Now I may have to trap for six more months, but single I will be.